Next from Springfield, State Senator Jason Barrickman and others discussed the Vision 2020 program and its effect on a statewide evidence-based education funding reform. This runs about 20 minutes. Uh, thanks all for being here. We've got actually a large group, uh, some with, some outside uh, the small room here. Uh, kind of an accumulation of uh, uh, school board members, superintendents, uh, uh, parents, and others uh, from the education community who are interested in this topic, as well as joined by some specific people here who uh, will uh, make some comments here shortly. Um, as the uh, General Assembly uh, prepares to return to the state capitol next week, it's uh, very obvious that the issue of education is and will remain a very hot topic. And I think it's time for educators and taxpayers to fully engage in the conversation about public education in Illinois. Uh, the education community has spoken loudly about the immediate financial challenges they face if they to continue to provide high quality educational opportunities for our children. Governor Rahner has repeatedly made statements that his priority is education. And taxpayers deserve confidence that their dollars are being spent effectively and efficiently in support of our education system. So the time to come together on a solution, I believe, is now. I will be filing legislation that will adopt an evidence-based funding model to replace Illinois' current antiquated school aid formula. If we're ever going to end the funding disparity between school districts and replace the clearly broken funding mechanism that is in place now, I think we have to look to real evidence-based solutions. Uh, we must demand a more strategic approach that links uh, best practices and evidence-based approaches to the funding mechanism. Uh, Illinois should consider the educational environment which optimizes student learning, creates a funding model that encourages those behaviors in our classrooms and in our schools. It's a, I call this, the, it's kind of a Stephen Covey. It's a begin with the end in mind approach to education funding policy. Our Illinois schools need help, uh, but we must do it in a way that restores taxpayers' confidence that they aren't being asked to contribute their money to a funding model that's broken and is not working effectively or efficiently. An evidence-based funding model allows lawmakers to see exactly how specific dollars will be spent. It's a transparent, common sense approach that eliminates arbitrary budget decisions and instead links actual educational outcomes to increases or decreases in state funding. Ultimately, the model is scalable and re realistic regardless of the budget decisions made by political leaders through political compromises. It allows educators to allow best practices, but it retains flexibility at the district level so that districts control their allocation of state funds based on their experience and their knowledge that will match their local needs and in order to best support each individual student. Further, this plan contains a hold harmless, which allows us to eliminate the winners and losers controversy that could, could plague any reform effort like this. Um, I'm, uh, just as background, the, the Illinois Senate Republican Caucus uh, previously published its examination of the state's system of school funding we concluded that there is a significant budget disparity that treats Illinois school children differently simply based on where they happen to live. Uh, I then had the opportunity to join Senator, Mar Senator Menar, who's here with us today. I uh, certainly want to thank uh, Senator Menar for being here. I think he has shown tremendous leadership on this issue, both through his chairmanship of the Education Funding Advisory Committee, what we call EFAC, uh, his role and the role of many people who have uh, participated in this dialogue, this important dialogue. Uh, I think Senator Menard has taken a key role. He's introduced uh, legislation last year, Senate Bill 16, uh, this year, Senate Bill 1, and he's clearly demonstrated a willingness and an effort to try to move this issue forward, and I commend him for that. Um, I, I also thank him for being here today to participate in this. I think, especially this year, when you consider uh, the stage that has, been, that has been set in Springfield, this is a year where we can find common ground. I don't think this is a proposition that should be considered in the needs to be one or the other. 
I'm excited about this legislation. I'm excited about the opportunity it provides us to work together in a bipartisan fashion to ultimately craft comprehensive education funding reform. I also want to thank the uh, Vision 2020 Coalition for their efforts to rally the edu education community around the state. Uh, their continued grassroots support throughout the state will make sure the importance of this issue is localized for every legislator in the General Assembly. And uh, finally, I, I simply feel that today is a significant step forward on a solution to fix the education funding inequity problems in Illinois. We need to make sure that school districts receive the financial support they need so all students have opportunities to achieve, high, uh, achieve success at high levels. We need to ensure that a quality education is not determined by a student's zip code. And we need to restore taxpayers' confidence that they aren't being asked to contribute more money to a funding model that isn't working effectively or efficiently. We need leadership. We need bipartisan cooperation. I think today we've got a, a very good start. I think together we can solve the problem that is a detriment to the social and economical health of Illinois. And I'd like to turn it over to my friend, Senator Andy Menard. Good afternoon. Good to see everybody again. I was here a couple weeks ago uh, when we um, introduced uh, Senate Bill 1 uh, in, in the Senate. Uh, that was a, an important step. And I'm here today uh, because uh, Vision 2020's work, I think, is an important step forward uh, to advance the conversation, as Ser Senator Berrigman said, uh, to get us to a bipartisan solution for the challenges that we face uh, with school funding. So I want to start off by thanking, um, thanking the Senator for his work. Uh, as I have uh, found out in the last couple years, it isn't always uh, the easiest thing to do to take ideas and then commit them to uh, legislation and file them. Uh, but this is an important step forward because what we need uh, at this time more than anything is solutions uh, that lead us to a good outcome. And I view this step as a good step forward to try to get us uh, to that goal. Uh, Senator Berkman and I have talked um, uh, on any number of occasions since EFAC began. That was when, Jason? That was uh, two years ago, I believe. Um, you know, there were four Democrats and four Republicans in the Senate that spent upwards of about 50 hours together, 50 hours, uh, taking public testimony, uh, taking ideas, taking concepts. Uh, Jason's work in issuing that report uh, should not go unnoticed, and his work to move that report into legislation also should be noted today. Uh, so I view uh, today's action of, of filing the piece of Vision 2020 uh, the deal specifically with school funding is another step forward in our continued effort uh, to try to solve the problems that we face. Um, I do think it's important to note today, uh, which is exactly what Senator Berrickman just said, that uh, what we're faced with is not um, anything other than a set of challenges that ought to be um, attacked by multiple solutions from different points of view. Uh, different ideas should be welcome, and as I have said for uh, any given uh, number of months, that those are the things, once we hear them, once we see them, those are the things that will lead us to a better place in the state. And the place that we are today, everybody knows, uh, whether you live uh, in the northern part of the state or the southern part of the state, whether you uh, walk through the doors of a school that has resources or you walk through the doors of a school that doesn't. You know that the system is broken at its core and it needs a dramatic fix. And today's action, I believe, gets us further toward meeting that challenge for the kids in the state of Illinois. So again, I want to compliment Senator Berrickman and the work uh, that was put into this piece of Vision 2020. And I'm here to uh, support this step forward because I believe it's this type of action that's constructive, that brings ideas to the table, that ultimately is going to get us to a solution this spring during this session. We do have an opportunity. I want to echo Senator Berrickman's remarks on that front as well. Uh, we have an opportunity this spring uh, because A, it's, it's imperative that we act quickly, and B, because I think there is a genuine sense uh, in the legislature working with the new governor that we can advance a bipartisan solution uh, to the school funding challenges we face in the state. So I'm prepared to do that, and I'm prepared to work for that this spring. 
that means you welcome new ideas, you welcome uh, different points of view, and you have a conversation about those things with the goal of trying to advance a bipartisan solution. And that's why I'm here today to support this. And I thank the Senator, and I thank the Management Alliance and the others that have put work into Vision 2020 for bringing these ideas forward. Well, good afternoon. I'm Brent Clark with the IESA, and I want to thank uh, both Senators Berrigman and Menar for not only being here today, but being such strong and articulate voices around probably the most critical issue facing our public schools in the immediate term and the long term. And they both have stepped up, not only uh, just in the last couple weeks introducing bills, but I remember going to those EFAC hearings and some of those 50 hours. Those were some long evenings waiting to testify. But uh, the work begins to pay off when you start to see these ideas put into legislation. So just to take you real quickly back, a couple months ago we stood here and said Vision 2020 is now uh, alive and well. We'll be back in, in a few months to start introducing legislation, and today starts that with the first bill being around funding. The comprehensive plan is really a, a combination of good ideas that have been really floating around out there for a long time, just never packaged in a way that we could advance uh, comprehensive solutions to the multitude of problems, funding and other things that face public education from one end of the state to the other. And we believe this package really gets at uh, what's important uh, in public schools. And if the thing you'll want to remember about Vision 2020 is that this is a kid-focused plan. There's nothing in here about adults. There's no perk, no advantage, no, no edge given to an adult. This is really about it in improving the experience and the environment for the kids, 2.1 million kids in Illinois that really are counting on it. I would like to introduce, if I could real quickly, those organizations that contributed, uh, statewide organizations, starting with the Illinois Principals Association, the Illinois Business Officials, the School Boards uh, Association, the uh, PTA across Illinois, uh, the Regional Superintendents, and the Superintendents Commission for the Study of Demographics and Diversity. Without them, uh, we never would have arrived at a comprehensive, thorough package of solutions to put forward. And I would, I would remind everyone that not only has the Illinois PTA endorsed this on a statewide level, but the Ounce of Prevention has, along with the Center for Tax and Budget Accountability. And we want to uh, bring these different packages forward and, and let you know up front that these work in tandem. So you'll see uh, upcoming bills that will be introduced, and they'll work well with the funding. And, and while we're looking at how do we re reroute the formula, how do we uh, put dollars in the classroom, we're also going to be looking at how do we lower the cost of delivering what it is that we're delivering in public schools. So both of those pieces on the scale. And then, to top that off, the third package will be the accountability model. How do we report out to the investors, the taxpayers, the state of Illinois, what it is we're doing with those dollars and those opportunities that we have in the school? We think those three packages will work extremely well together to provide a world-class education and, and provide accountability and transparency to the people that are paying for it. So at this moment, I'd like to introduce uh, the Executive Director for the Illinois PTA, Jolene Louder. Hi, everybody. Um, I speak for 100,000 parents across the state of Illinois. Um, I started working with PTA in 2000, and over the last 15 years, I've uh, watched our schools being asked to do more with less. Um, our schools have buckled down, our teachers have continued to increase their workloads, and our parent organizations have sub subsidized school funding through fundraising. Illinois is a vast state with many communities struggling economically. Um, this makes Outs oh, sorry, this makes outside fundraising inconsistent. The bill being introduced by Senator Brickman will be uh, a great first step in ensuring equitable, adequate funding for schools throughout the state of Illinois. And I'm going to turn it over to Lisa Weitzel. Hi, I'm Lisa Weitzel, and I serve on the Board of Education in the Ball Chatham School District, about 10 miles south of here. And as a school board member, as a parent, as a member of the board of the Illinois Association of School Boards, I have watched over the last several years as our funding um, is not at adequate levels for our kids. We're, I'm blessed in the school district in that we live, but as we continue to move forward and think about, oh, we're about to go into negotiations with our teachers, how do we reward them if we can't have the funds properly to reward them? How do we provide materials in the classrooms for our children? How do we ensure that class sizes meet uh, 
uh, the right sizes. It's best practices show that class sizes for K-2 should be smaller class sizes for those children. If we can't afford to have teachers to teach those smaller class sizes, we can't help our younger students. And I am just thrilled for the legislation that's been brought forth today, and I really appreciate their support. And I'd like to turn it back to the senators. Okay, thank you. I'm sure there's no questions. <laughs> So how, how are Kurt, these yeah, two no. bills compatible or incompatible? Your federal one, your bill, which I don't know. Well, I, th I think we're trying to achieve the same, uh, a solution to a problem which we, we certainly agree upon. Um, we agree that, and I don't want to speak for Senator Menard, but I, you know, I, I think we agree that the formula that exists today is broken. We've got to find a solution. Uh, Senate Bill 1 has a number of components to it. Uh, this legislation speaks uh, solely to the formula, the funding mechanism, which will distribute those tax dollars to the hundreds of school districts. I don't know if that gets to the heart of your question or if Senator Menard wants to add anything further. Yeah, I'm unclear too if this is it. one instead of the other. I, I'm really unclear as to, as to if it's a Venn diagram and, and why we have a need for two bills, I, you know, I, I, I might be the only one, by the way, but I, I'm really not clear on it. Well, again, I, I think there's, there's many components to SB1, and I'll leave it to Senator Menard to lay out those many components. This legislation speaks strictly to the funding formula itself and says that we will adopt an evidence-based funding model, meaning we're going to ask, what do we want the classroom environment to look like? And we create a funding mechanism that gets the dollars that, encour that encourages those, those outcomes. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Here's an example. Um, if the evidence suggests that the ideal situation for kindergarten through third grade is a classroom setting where the teacher to student ratio is 15 to 1 or 1 to 15. If the evidence says that that's going to produce the best outcome for the child, then this funding formula would say would encourage those outcomes in the classrooms. But we don't mandate it. We give the local district flexibility to make decisions based on local needs and local best practices. But as a state, this is the mechanism to get those dollars and encourage those behaviors to the, at the district level. Senator, you talked about updating the 2010 study. I believe at, at that point they put a price tag on this model at about $2.7 billion. Is that comparable? How much is it coming? You know, I mean, this is, this is no different than uh, EFAB today, the Education Funding Advisory Board, who publishes a, a number, I think it's about $8,900 a student, as being an ideal number that the legislature, uh, that the uh, General Assembly ought to fund to. Of course, the General Assembly hasn't done that. Um, those are, the, you know, price tags and costs are really a component of political decisions made by the legislature when we go through the budget process. Independent of those political decisions is the question of what's the formula used to distribute whatever dollars are available. And all this legislation speaks to is changing that formula, that distribution formula, whether there's one dollar or more that's pumped through. So I don't think you can put a price tag on this because it has nothing to do with the amount of money put through it. It has everything to do with how it's distributed among the school districts. You're watching the Illinois Channel an independent nonprofit corporation form to provide gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois.